Hello, and today we're going to be covering OpenSCAP. So, what is OpenSCAP? Just quickly, on Wikipedia, it's a security content automation protocol, and it's a way of using um, specific standards to enable automatic vulnerability management, things like that. We're going to use it today for doing a CIS scan and seeing how bad or how good our system compares to what the standards are. So, again, any, with everything, it's a documentation. Go to the OpenSCAP website, familiarize yourself with how it all works. Um, so you can basically use OpenSCAP to check and then harden your Centus or Red Hat servers. I think it does work for Ubuntu and Windows as well. And you can comply with CIS or the STIG or PCI benchmarks. Um, CentOS 8 doesn't seem to work very well out of the box. It needs a few adjustments. So I'm going to go through that today. And then by the end of the day, we'll have a running uh, CIS scan. That we'll be able to, so we're going to install the required packages. We're going to make some updates to Sense8 to make it work. We're going to perform a scan of our server, and then we're going to view the output on my web server. So it can be on a Windows display. It just creates a .html file that we can view. And this is part one. And in part two, um, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to generate, using OpenSCAP, uh, an Ansible playbook that you can then run against your server to remediate all of the issues and get it to score much higher in the CIS benchmark. So that can actually provide you with a tool to, um, I guess, create like a golden image of a server which you can then build from okay all commands can be found on this gist and again all of this information is going to be in the information so yeah so in the description so this is what i'm going to run this is the gist so let's just get started so what i've got i've got a centos 8 box it's not been up that long um yeah not been up long couple of hours so let's just get straight into it so first of all you need to install open scap scanner and SCAP security guide. So obviously you need root access to this or root privileges. So let's let that install. And then we're gonna check if we can just run a report. So everything is governed by profiles. Um, I'll show you a list of, I'll show you how to pull out profiles um, shortly. So, oh yeah, take a yes to that. So we're just gonna just run our first scan. So I think, this will fail. So in CentOS, if you were using Red Hat at this point and you were running the same scan, so here we're using, this is the actual sort of report we're going to compare against. Um, if we were using, oh yeah, let me, oh yeah. So when we try and run it, we get not applicable. Uh, that's because it doesn't recognize CentOS 8. So just cancel that. That'll take a couple of seconds to cancel. So now that we can see that, um, we can run a few other bits. So I've managed to cobble, basically cobble this together. It's a bit of a hack. Um, there are ways to maybe download the source and then use that and compile that yourself. But that just seemed, um, well, it just seemed a bit tricky. So I'm just gonna copy this. Right, so let's just copy all those. That's it, so that's all done. All right, that's all gone to the things. Now if we try and run it again, let's see what happens. So does it work yet? Okay, still not applicable, so no, it hasn't worked. So it still hasn't picked up the fact we're using CentOS, but that's okay. So now we're gonna run this. What this does is it's gonna use said to update the contents of this, any of these files with from Red Hat to CentOS. So let's copy that. So it's a bit of a hack takes a second that will run and now if we come back here so it basically yeah replaces Red Hat Kernel Enterprise with CentOS CentOS so now let's check if it works actually before we do that let's list out all the different profiles that we can use so we're running this OSCAP info command on our file if we see so let's just make it bigger and run it again so if you scroll up to the top you don't have to go up too far you can see that these are all different um, profiles. So we're gonna use this one today. Um, I have used this OSPP, but whenever I run it, I get like a segmentation fault. So something it's doing something that my server doesn't like, so we're not gonna to touch that one. We're gonna just do CIS. Um, it may be because I'm using a very low uh, T2 micro, yeah, which has only got a gig of memory. So it may be something to do with that. So we're just gonna use this benchmark today. So let's bring it back again, size-wise. So just, run the same command that we've always run. So now instead, I hope this works, instead of getting not applicable, we should now start get some real tests out. 
and it's going to send the report here. So is it going to work? Okay, so there's some there's some warning messages here, but that's okay. So it's going through now. It's going to start looking at all the different CIS checks instead of saying not applicable. It's actually going to verify if they're working. So let's just let that run a minute, and then what that's going to do is that's going to create a report in the temp report.html directory. And like I say, you can pick different profiles. We're picking CIS. It's probably going to be the most popular. The other one will be PCI, I suspect. So this will run through. Let's just give this a minute to run. It shouldn't take too long. And then what we'll do is I will, on my other server, so I've got a web server here. It's just not doing anything. And again, it won't be here for long. Um, I'm going to copy across the file to the report and then we'll just view it on the web page. That's easier than trying to copy it across to my PC. Okay, this will take a second. And this is customizable. Um, I'm not going to customize any of it. I'm just taking it as it is. And in part two, we're going to use Ansible to actually, or an Ansible playbook that OpenScan is going to generate to run against our server. And that's going to fix all the stuff it can fix. And then when we compare the old and the new report, you're going to see there's a lot of differences. So shouldn't take much longer. Yep, feel free to skip at this point. And we're done. Okay, so just have a look in slash TMP so we can see that there's a report there. So I've already got this set up. I just need the IP address. Let me just grab it. Okay, and my other server. So I've got a command ready. I'm just going to take out this server and put mine in. Okay, so that's copied the report over. So now if we change our URL to just be report.html, so we can see that, so is that my server? Yeah, 2611, 2611, so that's my new server. We're seeing it's a CIS profile, and it was done literally for me. That's my. That's just a few minutes ago. So we can see here that we didn't pass 134 tests so we've got 129 failures. Yeah, you can scroll through here. You can do things like install aid because it tells you what to do. Let's do. Well, actually, I'm going to save this for the next step, for the next part. So we can see here that we've got all the CIS tests. You can scroll down here. If you click on one, it'll tell you what to do to fix it. That's what you need to do to fix it. To make sure the setting is persistent, you need to add that to slash etc system. So it's very, very similar to the CIS benchmark. In fact, it is a CIS benchmark, but done via OpenSCAP. So there you go. You now have a CIS report for your server. It's up to you to go through and remediate this. But if you join me in part two, we're going to use Ansible to fix it for us. And it's like magic. It's going to take about 10 minutes. Um, and then you're going to be able to remediate all your servers to the CIS benchmark. OK, so join us in part two. Subscribe so you can find out all the latest videos. I've got loads of stuff on there. If you actually like the videos, then click like. You know, you want to see more, subscribe. Nice one. I'll see you in the next video.